Good afternoon from Bitcoin 2022 in Miami. I'm Ronella Hernandez with Cointelegraph, and I'm here with Noah Perlman, the Chief Operating Officer at Gemini. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you. So let's start from the beginning. How did you get into blockchain? How did you first hear about it? And do you remember the price of Bitcoin at the time? Uh, I think I uh, can answer all of those. So uh, I actually have a somewhat um, usual trajectory to, to crypto in that uh, I started interested in finance and actually worked uh, at a traditional finance shop for almost 14 years. One of the duties I had uh, uh, at the bank that I worked at was evaluating all the crypto and blockchain opportunities that came to the bank. Uh, evaluating them both for uh, credit worthiness, uh, reputational risk, regulatory concerns. And as, through that, uh, I became interested uh, and like you know the, the cliche down the rabbit hole into crypto. Uh, when the opportunity came, when Gemini was looking uh, for a chief compliance officer, uh, I was contacted, was I interested in uh, applying? And uh, the rest is history, as they say. All right. And then... How do you see the role of Gemini in the growth of, of blockchain and mass adoption? Yeah, great question. So look, we, we have a very sp specific uh, role to play in the ecosystem. Um, and actually, if I can sort of talk a little bit about the state of the crypto report that we just issued. Sure. So we, Gemini issues every year a state of the crypto report, uh, surveys almost 30,000 adults in 20 different countries. Um, and I know we'll get into some of those results, but one of the things that is very clear from that survey is that people want a regulated compliance solution. Uh, and that's the role that Gemini plays. Since our founding, we have been about security, about compliance, about regulation. Uh, the motto of our founders, Tyler and Cameron Winklevoss, is uh, we ask for permission, not forgiveness. Mm -hmm. So wherever we operate in the world, we do it uh, with collaboration with the regulators. Uh, and there's definitely a, a demand and a need for that. And that's the part of the role that we play. Okay. And so I know in this report, um, it was found that the ownership of crypto has doubled, especially in Latin America and Asian countries. So what do you think is the biggest driver of that? Yeah, yeah. So we did that exactly right. So in 2021, it was a breakout year for crypto. Uh, almost 50% of people bought their first crypto in 2021. And I think there are a number of things contributing to, to that sort of wider adoption. So one is something, what we just talked about is uh, regulation and security, and it's crypto is no longer the wild, wild west. Right. Uh, it, the longer it persists, the more people feel comfortable that it's safe and secure. And then the other thing, uh, a more unfortunate driver of adoption is simply the sort of dislocation you're seeing in the world. So uh, we found, the report found that inflation was a big driver. And in fact, we found that in countries where the currency has been significantly devalued over the last 10 years, people there are five times more likely uh, to say they want to buy crypto. Right, yeah, out of desperation or just a need for alternative uh, payments and transactions. Well, you no, know, exactly. The need, the, you should hit it right on the head, the need. Yeah. So in developing countries, we, the results would suggest that crypto is uh, a nice to have. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, maybe this rounds out the portfolio. But in countries that are developing or where there is severe sort of currency uh, volatility dislocation, it becomes a, a must have. Right. Uh, right. And that's what, the, that's what the numbers are showing us. And what do you think are some of the barriers to adoption? Yeah, good question. So a couple barriers. So one, despite what I said earlier about regulatory clarity, that's still a big, that's still a big uh, barrier to adoption. Mm -hmm. uh, people uh, around the world, not just in the U.S., are, you know, is this legal? What is this crypto all about? And right. having some regulatory clarity there. The other big one is education. Uh, and people still need to be more educated about what crypto is. And interestingly enough, one of the, one of the findings that came out of a report that, and this uh, probably of all the ones, this surprised me probably the most, is that people found, we found that people were more likely to buy crypto if they had more education about crypto mm. or did their own research than a recommendation from a friend. Uh, and the reason that surprised me is in traditional finance, you like to think that uh, the friend network, oh, this is a financial advisor I work with, I recommend them, that that drives adoption. Here, it's really uh, being educated. It's one of the reasons why we invest a lot in education. We've got a property, Cryptopedia, which is a great beginner sort of starting point for people. Uh, it's why we're really committed to it. Okay. And then what other initiatives um, do you have in order to establish more education? 
So uh, Cryptopedia is the big one. The other thing that we do is we, through uh, some of our properties, we've got a, a frontier, an investment fund, um, and something that we're not quite ready to launch publicly. Okay. But we are, um, but I can talk about it. I mean, one of the main things it's going to be doing is investing in core developers and investing in uh, you know, resources to help educate uh, okay. more people about it. And what about on the institution side? What is their incentive to, to adopt crypto and, and to work with, with Gemini? Yeah, so, uh, well, institutions are coming in because for a number of reasons. One is they see the opportunity, and we've seen in recent weeks, I mean, we've seen Goldman do a trade, Cowan, we've seen other institutions come in, and despite the fact that just a few years ago, um, uh, we all know the quotes about what they were talking about crypto uh, and not even allowing, I mean, I, I've heard anecdotes that at some banks you couldn't even like put crypto in a memo, yeah. um, but now they're coming in. And one of the reasons they've gotten comfortable is players such as Gemini, and there are others too, mm -hmm. who understand regulation, who play by the rules, who understand reputational risk, who understand KYC. Um, yeah, an institution is not going to partner in this space without somebody who plays by the same rules. Right. It's just too much risk for them. Okay. So that's a big driver. Okay. And what about um, stable coins? Do you think, uh, like, what are the policy issues there when it comes to adopting stable coins? Yeah. So, um, you know, stable coins are interesting. And, uh, I, you know, I'm sure most of your viewers know what they are. But for those who don't, uh, stable coins are simply uh, cryptocurrencies crypto coins that are pegged one-to-one -to, -one to a particular currency. So there's no underlying volatility. So for example, Gemini has one, uh, GUSD, the Gemini dollar. It's literally pegged one-to-one. -one. It doesn't change from a dollar. Um, some, there's been some controversy about stable coins because there are some that are issued where it's unclear that there's actually a real dollar backing it. Um, and I won't name names, but there have been <laughs> audits um, and concerns that it, are the funds really there. Gemini dollar by contrast, and again, there are others that do this as well, every single dollar is backed by a real dollar that's audited by the DFS, and so uh, you don't have those concerns there. But I think the general concern is for those, uh, one of the big concerns is that where there isn't a real dollar, you know, is, is there some real risk uh, to the financial system because you've got you know, billions of dollars sloshing around and is it backed by anything? Right, right, okay, and since we are at Bitcoin Miami, I wanted to ask you where you saw the Bitcoin, where you see the Bitcoin ecosystem going yeah. and, and growing in the next few years. Yeah, sure. Um, and now I'll answer your question at the outset. What was the price of Bitcoin oh, when yes. I first? I think it was about four thousand, give or take. Okay. okay. So uh, you know, we're t uh, even with the sort of recent uh, pullback the last couple of days, still uh, you know, uh, ten times where it was when I started. So. Yeah. And I know for a lot of people that four thousand number is uh, probably. 10, 20 times what they, where they found it, but that's 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 where I was when I really started started following it. So look, I still think I think Bitcoin. Um, I know we're at the conference, and obviously we've got thousands and tens of thousands of people here who are who are talking about and studying it. Um, you know, it's here to stay. Um, uh, I'm excited about lots of different projects, but Bitcoin remains um, the project that is sort of you know the OG, as it were. <laughs> Um, and I think that, again, for people who are less close to the space, you know, the, a lot of the criticisms uh, about its effectiveness as a currency, um, you know, speed, energy, I think these are, uh, while legitimate questions, I think they're all being solved as the, as, um, as the ecosystem evolves. And one thing, I mean, Bitcoin, you know, for, for those of us who are following it, for, I think a lot of us it would agree it's really a store of value. It's digital mm -hmm. gold 2.0, um, easier to transport. Um, uh, you know, more finite, uh, a great inflation hedge, so, you know, big things ahead. Do you think it has the possibility of becoming like a standard for I global do. financial transactions? I do. Um, now, where I, you know, I come from it, um, maybe more conservative than others in that I don't think, I don't know that that's an inevitability. Mm -hmm. Um, but I don't think it's impossible either, and I think there is a, a likelihood that it will that you might see increasing adoption and, and, and start really seeing it as the standard. All right, amazing. Well, thank you so much, Noah, for your time. Thank you so much for having me.